and I just do both sides at the same time, just work my way down it. When I take very much off this one, I usually give it a quick little stroke like that because it can push a little bit of material out the other side. See, this is actually not taking a whole lot off, but a couple of the teeth were, they had little dings where I had to grind a little more or taking a little extra off. Yeah, and as far as telling when you're done, for one, you'll hit a couple teeth in the row that you're not taking anything off. The other thing you'll see is they'll get shiny. From where he already did them. Like those are all shiny. So. This one's. Same raker gauge if I can pick it up. Now you could use a file card to clean your file up, I know. Some guys that do. But these teeth are pretty hard, so it doesn't gum it up too bad. And I usually just give it a tap or wipe it on the pants. It's good enough. Just don't tell my wife, she probably doesn't like 
metal shavings in the laundry, but you know. Like that, this one's done. Got an upcoming project on that little saw. That was just up there, the MS-180. Oiler's giving me fits. Need to put a new oiler in it. Don't think I'll do that tonight. Now the other thing, person could do too, like uh, if you're worried you could put a dab of ink on there so you know where you're going, or uh, look for your two teeth on the one side if you have it. This chain doesn't, but this yellow link, the paint's wore off on this side. That would be your master length, where that goes on. So, you could always just do that, where I'm just starting uh, one tooth behind that one. Now this one, it, uh, you know, it's removing a fair amount of material, but if you see the angle this sits, down there on it uh, fair amount of what I'm removing right now is just putting that angle in there next time I file the riders it'll just you know just be purely depth when you're doing these these are your depth gauge riders rakers it's all the same thing and this height in relation to your tooth dictates how much wood you're taking off that's why I like this has a hard and a soft side and there is a, a measurement there I don't remember what it is but uh, your harder woods you want to take a little less at a time soft you can take more get into something like cedar there that's done something like cedar you could take even more I think redwood got similar cedar I don't know I've never cut any there's different styles like here's another style and it it sets right there then you just go straight across. But what I don't like is I feel that this is averaging this tooth and this tooth. You'll take a touch more off of this tooth. It's quite a bit short, but not enough. Because you can set your grinder to set all your teeth the same, and then you can try and just do a couple strokes. And you know, some people have good luck with that, I guess. But um, if I'm hand filing, I just file till it till it's sharp and even on the grinder I get to a tooth I had a couple in my grinder video there where it uh, it's like oh this one this one needs a little more off and I just adjust that in a little bit and I take a little more off yeah so Well, this chain's gonna be fun. Taking a fair amount off on this one.
this is an older chain I've I've always cut firewood and stuff but I've just recently kind of got serious about the firework been doing a little bit of tree work too and uh, learning a learned a lot just in the last year or thereabouts about chainsaw chaining and, and stuff because I guess I got sidetracked there the uh, the reason I like this and the way it does every tooth off itself is it helps you cut straighter if if it's if your cut is going down like this and then it starts kind of creeping over there's a couple things that can cause that uh, the most likely is your depth gauges aren't your your rakers your depth gauge isn't properly set for your tooth height and you got one side grabbing more than the other and I have seen people that are really good at what they do and they're like oh I'm pulling that way need to take a couple a couple strokes off you know this side and straighten it out and if you're one of those guys so well, all the more power to you I like to just use a gauge you know I'm, I'm not that good at it you know but Give her a quick scrub. This one, and that's where I'm kind of at with this one. Is I probably got this chain five, six years ago. It was pretty beat up. So my guess is, is I tattooed a rock with it and just set it aside. <laughs> you know, that wasn't the best thing to do, but my skill level at the time it's like I set it aside and take it into somewhere and get it ground but now my wife and daughters got me my own grinder you know and plus I've like I said I've learned a, a fair amount recently about them it's just kind of funny to is your skill level and knowledge improved to, you know this is like a step back in time that's like so i was grinding this i was looking at the inconsistencies of the angle of my hand file the the, the, the lack of cleaning the gullet out when i filed it you know and uh just the fact that this chain is three quarters wore out the riders are never been touched <laughs> that was Part of the reason I put this one back on, actually, you guys, uh, now that I think about it, my grinder video didn't show this, because this was one I had already done, and te or the, the one I did in there was one that was on this saw. This is my 25-inch bar. It was on this saw, and I had already done that one and cleaned that one up. That's the one I had been using most recently. This was one I turned off, figured I'd showed enough grinding, and... I knocked out two old 25 inch ones I found and this is one of those and it was it was ugly you know, so. but you know it's all about learning you know kind of the way I look at it is nobody knew it all to begin with no matter how much they might try and tell you they did you know no one did you know you learn and some people learn faster than others, and some, you know, got lucky and got in with the right kind of people. And part of it's a 
a career thing, you know. I I never did much logging. Did a little bit once, one summer. That was it. Yeah, I worked in the timber industry. I uh, primarily worked in sawmills, so. Let's see. I guess I'll just have to, I'll just have to do the rakers when I uh, put them on. I was trying to think a way to do it. That little clamp doesn't really give me much room to work around. You can do it with the grinder. I think there's a way to set it up, but grinding wheels aren't super expensive, but I prefer just to do that by hand. The, uh, the grinder is really nice, don't get me wrong. And I have kind of, you know, picked up a few more things. I need to get them swapped. I caught a nice little deal. Two oxygen in, in the settling tanks. One cutting torch set. An argon tank. That's just a little cheap 110 welder. But I wanted the argon tank for my 220 wire feed. There we go. That has all five of my chainsaws ready to go. Uh, about midnight. Probably call that good. Here's here's a couple other things I'll show you. Upcoming. Some upcoming content. A little uh, preview for you. I have this nice one. I couldn't find any marking. It's nice and pitted. That's a nice, nice little one there. I'll get that rehandled and just put it, just remove just enough for a nice splitting edge. Look at this. This is in thousandth. Here's something to show you. That leaves one mark left over going inside. I don't feel like counting thousandths in there. And that takes up that last mark. This side is wider than this side. Mount this on top right, right like that. Won't, won't ever come off on you. Here's, here's another nice one. I'm going to put a handle in. This will make a nice chopper. Once again, no markings on it that I could find. But there, that's a nice chopper. This one will be a nice splitter. That one will end up somewhat like this. This is my favorite splitter right there. So I just need to pick up some handles and make some time. Well, thanks for watching. Have a good one.